Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Perhaps the best known human covenant that we all experience in this life is the covenant of marriage. Two people promise to one another to be faithful, to love, to care and support one another for the rest of their lives. The problem, of course, is that that covenant is made between two imperfect human beings. And it doesn't always last. As a matter of fact, one of the horrible statistics in this day and age is that people getting married from this day forward probably stand a 50% chance of not making it in that institution. The marriage covenant is far different from the covenant that God made with his people. God had taken his people from Egypt and their bondage, brought to the wilderness, to the edge of the mountain. As the scriptures say, I bore you on eagles' wings. Moses is called to the mountain and he has an encounter with God. And God tells him, remember all of the things that I have done for you, how I took you from bondage and brought you here, what I did to the Egyptians. I want you to go down from this mountain and tell and remind the Israelites that I make a new covenant with them, that you will be my people, that I expect that you will be a holy nation and a kingdom of priests. Tell this to the people of God. So Moses does exactly that. He goes to the leadership of the Israelites and he tells them all that God has done for them and asks them to sign, seal, and deliver the covenant And so they respond, all of the things you say we will do. Any of you that have done any reading in the Old Testament know that that covenant didn't last too long. Not because God broke it, but because the human beings broke it. Over and over and over again throughout the Old Testament, we are told that they break this and do not remember what they had promised. Yet the amazing thing about this, folks, is that God doesn't forget his covenant. God doesn't say, you broke the covenant, therefore you are no longer my people. Through forgiveness and love, He remembers his promise and continues to be with them. And make no mistake about it, he does so even to this day, hoping that one day the people of Israel will remember all that God has done for them and come to the realization that he even sent his son, Jesus the Christ, for a new covenant the covenant in which you and I share, the covenant of baptism. God sent his son and loved us so much that he offers us forgiveness and new life. He continues to love us. but reminds us that we now are to be that holy nation and that kingdom of priests. Not with words that flow easily from our mouths, but in the actions and deeds of our life. In baptism, you and I were freed from slavery. Not bondage to a foreign power, but freed from the bondage to sin. 
God knows how difficult it is for us to fulfill that promise. The power of evil is all around us. So understand this. A couple of weeks ago when we celebrated the great feast of Pentecost, we are reminded that God sent his power of the Holy Spirit to be with us and among us, knowing how difficult it is for us to live up to the promises so that every one of us might know that we are not alone in this life. And that living up to that covenant isn't just based upon you and me and our abilities, but in word and holy sacrament, we are forgiven and reminded that he is always with me. Unlike the kids, how many of you do you remember your confirmation? It's not bad. In your confirmation, you promised. You took the promises of your parents upon yourself, and you said all of these things that my parents promised to live that Christian life of prayer and word and sacrament, I take upon myself. And the pastor asked you, do you promise? Any of you remember how you answered that? The old hymnals the confirmation service. The answer to that promise was, yes, I will by the help of God. Knowing full well that we can't do it by ourselves. Yes, by the help of God. We are God's people, loved, forgiven. The cross of Jesus Christ reminds us of the sacrifice he made and how much he loves us. And in the Holy Sacrament, in a few minutes, we will be reminded that we are not alone in this life, that he is here for us constantly with forgiveness and the strength of the Spirit to strengthen us in faith and the ability to live up to the covenant. How many times in your life, either through a poll or some kind of documentation, are you asked the question, what religion are you? And you either write down Christian or Lutheran, The covenant is more than simply easy term. You and I are expected to be more than some name. You and I in our lives are expected to be that holy nation and that kingdom of priests. Not with the words that flow off of our tongues, but the actions of our lives following the example of our Lord to love as we have been loved for creation and for all human beings. Not just for the people we like, even for those who give us trouble in this life. You are the baptized. You are the loved of God. His most precious possession. Remembering that, we pray together, Lord, forgive us and give us strength that we may be faithful to the covenant you have established with us. The covenant to which we all have responded, yes.
I promise, with the help of God. Help us, O Lord, to be people of action and not just simply people of words and phrases. Amen. The love of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise, confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize as we recite the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. Steadfast God, you send your church as laborers into the harvest. Heal our division and unite us in mission. Make us one at your table, Lord, in your mercy. Faithful creator, protect your earth and breathe life into its future. Stir our hearts to compassion that we may become healers for the sake of your whole creation that is made new. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you desire peace for all nations. Give rulers and citizens wisdom in the use of power that wars may cease and all who suffer exile, hunger, and terror may find safe haven. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate One, you have brought us to yourself. Stay near to all who suffer broken hearts, fearful spirits, and disruptive illness. Especially do we remember now Gail Johnson, Diana Dell's mom, surgery on Tuesday. I ask you to remember a good friend, Chris and Bill Hamill, as Chris undergoes cancer surgery on Wednesday. To remember those, especially Congressman Scalise, who still struggles to hold on to life and all of those harmed in the horrible incident this past week. David Birch, ongoing chemo, art praise. Elaine Townsend, Libby Salzer. I'm sorry, I can't read this. Some kind of infection. Karen Browner, baby Connor, born to addiction. These and all things and all people that we name in our hearts or with our voices now. Bring healing and hope to all of your people, Lord, in your mercy. Abba, Father, your love for your children is boundless. Bless all who father among us and all who yearn for a protective father. Grant wisdom, patience, and I must say good humor. Thank you for those who have shown us fatherly care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Living Lord, all who live and all who die belong to you. Thank you for all of those lives who have witnessed to your glory. Comfort all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, 
we entrust to your care through Jesus Christ, our Lord.